importance. Those leaders who have influence, those easy ones who have egos, and those who actually empower you to go and do things. Now, that's all, not all right, it's not all wrong, but you can see the indicators as to what you want to be like. Here's an individual I had the uh, pleasure of dealing with a few years ago. He changed his name. His name was Harry, uh, Harry Lee, and delightful man. He then went on to change his name to Lee Kuan Yew, and he was the guy who effectively started Singapore after the British had left it as a very chaotic colony uh, with riots and such like. Now, he's fairly controversial. Singapore is a sort of democracy, a sort of iron fist with a velvet glove on it, but nonetheless, it sort of works. And the people love him for it. And they love him for the order and discipline, which actually wouldn't work over here because actually a lot of us would kick back against that discipline, but it worked very effectively there. Whether it's going to carry on or not, with now his son in control, remains to be seen. But it's still the most effective operation I've seen. It is a city-state. It's pretty small overall. Uh, but nonetheless, an amazing leader, as opposed to this guy, a murderer, uh, and amongst other things. I used to work in Uganda, and the horrors he carried out there were quite appalling overall. But he was a leader. And people followed him because they felt they had to. They were terrified of him as to what he would actually do. And he did some most appalling things overall. Um, so therefore, you can say, did he empower people? He just terrified the living daylights out of people. But that's a form of leadership you don't want. Napoleon. Ness. Now, a brutal dictator or an enlightened leader in terms of what he did for the French legal code, the health code, education, uh, the reorganization of the theater, uh, and it was quite astonishing, all the areas he covered, apart from killing several million Frenchmen. Now, ah, some may say that's a benefit, but that's another issue. Um, but the whole point is here, here is someone who was actually, he wasn't even French, for heaven's sake, a Corsican, who came over and the French adored him. They adored him even after they had, he had killed millions of the people, and even when he came back again. And even then, when he was uh, then uh, after Waterloo, sent off to St. Helena and died and came back, and you only have to go to Paris, and they still laud him. That's an astonishing pit of leadership, considering the, what he did to so many of his pe people. Or someone like Marshal Ney, who was one of his very talented leaders, and they loved him. This man was useless. He was at, but his, his troops loved him. He managed to get shot, well, he managed to lose five horses at Waterloo. He probably lost Waterloo for Napoleon in the way he behaved. But his, lead, his troops would follow him anywhere and everywhere on the basis that he had such enthusiasm. He was the French version of Tigger. So great leadership skills, but lethal to anybody around him. Or how about these two? Compare this one. Bill Clinton very occasionally had something else on his mind, you know, which he's more famous for, whereas George Bush very rarely had anything on his mind. Both were leaders. You walk into the presence of George Bush, and you wouldn't be aware of it. Probably a waste of space. Bill Clinton walks into a room, and the whole room knows it immediately. So it is astonishing when you look at this, all these different types of leadership that you're dealing with. And maybe we can explore some of this this morning. There is no perfect recipe, except for the fact it is down most of it to your own common sense as to how you think it works. And best leadership works not on the individual, there may be a leader, but actually it's the people around that leader that actually makes it work effectively. I don't actually believe anyone could do it on their own. You have to do it with a whole group around you to make sure you do it successfully.